Hey, I'm Chris Ralph, the professional prospector, and today we're going to talk about hard rock veins and sampling. Now, I get people who contact me regularly and say, hey, I think I found some gold, or I think I found some quartz, I think I found a gold vein. You know, how, how can I, I sample for it? Well, you know, I can't look at stuff for you and figure out whether it's good or not. It's I get too many people asking that, and besides, uh, doing it by photograph is tough to do. So I'm going to tell you how to do it, how to take care of that, and find out for yourself if that quartz you found is actually a valuable gold vein. Now right behind me here, you can see there's a, a quartz vein that goes through here, and uh, yet there's another one over here that's a smaller one. And one of the things about sampling is you never know where the gold is going to be unless you test and find out. So if I were coming to this spot, here in the desert, I would take a sample of this vein, but I'd also take a sample of that little vein right next to it. And the way that the dip is on these two, one dips in this way, this one where I'm at dips more that way. Eventually sometime where in the ground down there, they'll join. But it's very common that one will carry or one part will carry and not others. So you've got to take lots of samples. Now, how do you sample something like this? Well, you've got to crush the material down to a powder size and then do like a gold panning and pan very carefully because a lot of these veins like this will have very fine gold. Even if there's a lot of gold, it'll tend to be on the fine side. And so what you'll want to do is get your rock pick and a chisel and bust out some samples of different places on the vein. And that, the another thing too is along the vein it can vary. So I might take a sample here, but I can see the vein up on the hill up there behind me. I might go up on the hill and sample it. And if, if it continues to be visible on the surface, I might sample it over there. Now, not all veins outcrop, and that's one of the things that you need to know. Sometimes the only thing you'll see of a vein is just scattered quartz on a hillside. And I can show you pictures of stuff like that. Here's a vein in the Nevada desert that crops out only an inch or two above the surface of the soil, but you can see pretty well where it is going because of the dark gray colored rock and then the white of the quartz vein. So this is a vein I found in the desert in Nevada and veins like this are really not that uncommon and not all of them were sampled by the old timers. Now here's another bit of vein material that I found in the mother load country of California. And here there really isn't a clear outcrop that you can see exactly where the vein is, but there's so much quartz in such a small area that you know that there's a quartz vein there. So these are the kinds of things that you might find. Of course, there's always versions where the vein crops out well and is obvious, but uh, things like this are also worth sampling. In places like that, you still have quartz that you could sample. You still could collect some of that quartz, crush it down, and see if you've got significant gold, free gold, in the uh, material that you collected, in the vein material you collected. So sampling is a super important thing, and it's an important skill that you need to have as a prospector to be able to go out there, recognize quartz veins and other things like this. This has actually got some quartz crystals on it and be able to know what to sample. You should be able to recognize too minerals like pyrite and galena. Um, sometimes on the surface like this, the pyrite will be weathered and it just look like little cubes of, of brown rust. That basically is rust. I mean, pyrite, which is uh, iron sulfide, on exposure to air and water will eventually, just like iron metal, will turn to rust. So recognize the materials, the quartz, pyrite take a lot of samples don't just take one or two samples if you have the chance take five or ten or fifteen samples and crush them all down pan them out and see if any of them have gold and of course if you have gold in any of your samples you're going to want to uh, you're going to want to really dig in and take a lot more samples now i collected a sample recently that had some nice quartz and bits of pyrite and, and limonite, the, uh, the, the basically the rust version of pyrite, 
and I'm going to go ahead and show you the process right now of crushing that sample down and seeing what the results we get and then we'll take the uh, the results that we get and we'll interpret it and we'll look at some different pictures of different samples that I've run for free gold and we'll kind of talk about what's good what's not good and what's yeah well move on so yeah that's one of the other things of prospecting is you need to be able to recognize what's good leave the not so good stuff behind and move on and keep going in your search for the good stuff so come along with me and we're going to take a look at the world of sampling so now i've talked about collecting the right kind of sample and what to look for and how to take the sample the next step to find out you know does your ore really have decent gold in it the next step is to crush it so I've got uh, a mortar and pestle here and you could, this is a really small one, you can use this to crush ore down and uh, this is basically a bot bottom but the, this part I lost the, the pounding part and I welded a, a little uh, ball from a ball mill on a piece of rebar and that makes for a good crusher. Now you can make these things. Um, you know, here's a piece, or basically a rod of steel and uh, uh, a long, uh, high diameter, large diameter, like a 5 8 inch bolt. And literally, if you have welding skills, you could weld this, and, and this could be your pounder. And then I've seen people take uh, steel pipe. You know, you could take like a 4 inch diameter pipe, weld it on a real solid base. You want to use like 3 8 or half inch as a base because remember you're going to be pounding on it. I've seen even ones where you have to stand to use it like a butter churn or something where you literally bam 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 to break the rock and you know that works. Basically the concept is the same as the old stamp mills that they used to use. Take a look at this. Here's one of the old stamp mills and you can see there's a big tall rod and then the drive wheel on the right hand side would make those rods lift and drop one at a time the five would go in order and then the at the bottom there was a big stamp about six inches in diameter six or eight inches in diameter and the whole rod puts plus the stamp at the bottom would weigh about a thousand pounds and that's how rock was broken until the turn of the century about 125 years ago that's how rock used to be bro broken in the old days okay but in modern times um you know and, and setting up something like that would be a major ordeal so basically you can either hand pound it or you can have a crusher like i do so i have a couple of crushers that i use to break up rock and here's my sample that i took this is basically quartz that I picked up at the site where the vein is and the quartz has in it spots of what were pyrite that's turned to rust, okay? It's a pyrite changed to a mineral called limonite. And basically what happens is, uh, you know, pyrite is made of iron sulfide and it easily rusts just like steel does and then turns to these little squares of limonite that were at one time pyrite. And what I'm gonna do is kick this and crush this down. Now the association of limonite and quartz in a quartz vein, the limonite and pyrite, what, what, what once was pyrite, uh, will indicate that there's a good chance that there's gold in this. But the only way I can find out is to crush it and see. So I'm gonna get started with the crushing process. I still haven't put my motor on this thing. I have a motor for it. I will get it installed soon. But I will put some of this rock in here and we will crush it all down. And crush it, this, this crusher will only take it down to about minus half inch. We'll break it down to minus half inch and then we'll take it over to the chain mill. I'll show you that in just a minute and the chain mill will take it down to powder size. And so once I have it as a powder, then I can wet it all down and pan it, just like I was panning a sample, pan it very carefully because you have to pan for really fine gold and then see what gold you got. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through those steps and I will crush this now and then show you the chain mill and then show you the panning 
and then we'll talk about what's a good result, what's an okay result, what's a bad result, you know, what's what's good enough to make it worthwhile for you, okay? So, I'm going to get started with the crushing. Say that I don't have my motor. Because I don't have my motor, I need to do this by hand. And it'll just take me a few minutes. This sample is only about mm, five pounds or so. It's an easy size sample that I can crush with this system and have ready to process so I can show you the result. We've got another sample too that I'm going to show you when I pan it out in a few minutes. But first, let me finish this and then we'll go over to the chain mill. So this is just a quick shot of my chain mill. You can see there's a short length of chain right here. There's a, a motor back here that spins the chain around at a super speed at like 1700 RPMs. And this is just a little drum that the chain spin around in. And the chain spinning so fast beat the ore up until it's small enough to go out. There's a small screen down here at the bottom of the drum. It got sucked out this tube and goes down to a dust collector. So that's just a, a quick basic description of how the the chain mill works. So now I'm going to take my sample and I'm going to run my sample through here. Actually I've got two samples to run. I'm going to run both my samples separately. I'll keep them separate and we'll run them through here and get them beat down to a small enough size that I can pan it out. So that's the end of my first sample. I've run it through, and uh, I, and because this is such a rigmarole to set up, I usually don't set it up until I have several things to run, and I've got uh, another sample that I want to run and test, and then I've got uh, 100 and something pounds of ore that I've got to run through too. So I'm gonna go ahead and get on with this, and then I'll see you over at the porch when I've got the second sample and the first sample both ready to pan, and we'll take a look at panning that and see what gold we get. So I'm down to the final step of my sample processing to determine how much uh, free gold was in that hard rock sample that I took. And one of the things that you're gonna do when you pan down and uh, I've got it all crushed, it's all fine sand now, um, you want to use water and you want to use a little bit of jet dry to help hold down anything that might float, including sulfides and the gold. Um, and you want to pan very carefully. You want to get the material in your pan, make sure it's well mixed, and be really careful. Because you want to be able to see all the free, the free gold that's in the sample. And in a lot of hard rock, materials, the gold is very fine sized. Now there's coarse gold too. I've shown you that in some of my other videos, but you'll see that fine gold is really common in hard rock. And so uh, you don't need to see me pan this out. Um, I've shown other techniques for panning uh, fine gold, but I'm gonna pan through this pan of material and then I'll bring you back to show you the results. And we'll talk a little bit about the nugget effect and some other things. So I'll be right back. So I got my sample all panned down. Here it is. Um, it does have some gold in it, but really not as much as you'd like to see. And so I don't think I'm gonna be mining a lot of rock at that point. But the trick is, is that you need to know with sampling, it's testing, testing, testing. And if you expect to hit a home run on every sample you take, I guarantee you're going to be disappointed. That's the whole thing about sampling. And it's why, you know, gold is rare. If gold were common, it wouldn't be $1,700 or more than $1,700 US an ounce. It's so valuable because it's rare. And so you're going to take a lot of samples and they're going to turn out like this. Maybe you get a little bit of gold, but not enough to make it work your while. That's the whole point of sampling though. Take a lot of samples. Take a lot of samples 
And, you know, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. You know, Babe Ruth was one of the greatest home run hitters of all time. He didn't hit a home run very often, at least when you count it to the number of at-bats that he had. And the same thing's going to happen with your sampling. You're going to have days, you have a lot of days, where you just don't really hit a big home run. But if you keep at it, if you're persistent, then you will have that success. You just need to stay at it. That's the whole, the whole trick of it is to be persistent. So and now this isn't very good, but let me show you, I'm gonna show you right now some slides as we finish up here of some pans that are really good, that show you what you would hopefully be finding. And those should give you a trick or, or some encouragement to, uh, to know what you need to be doing and when you get good results, you'll know that you really hit it good. And of course, when you hit good results, then you start mining and processing rock and you'd be making a lot of good gold. So let's take a look at some good results from sampling. So here is a sample. This is not the sample that I actually took uh, for the video, but it's one very much like it. This is kind of the results I got. Um, the gold is at the top of the crease of the pan. The yellowish material in the right and left lower part of the photo are just yellow colored sand. You can see there's a little tiny bit of gold, a few particles, small particles. Um, this is the kind of sample that you'll probably get a lot of stuff that looks like this. This is stuff that has gold in it, but is not worth working. It's a lot of work to crush down a whole pan full of ore. And if you're only getting a few little specks like this, well, you, you want to save what you've got, but you don't want to work large amounts of rock like this. So this is a result that says... Yep, there's gold there, but not enough to be worth working on a small scale. Next, we have a sample that shows that uh, it's a good result. This is probably worth working, but you can see if you look next to the little dime there that there's a small picker nugget. And one of the things about coarse gold is you never know what you're going to get. So if you took all this amount of gold and this is what you got in a pan full every time, you'd be getting a good result and honestly probably almost half the gold by weight of the total there is that little picker nugget. So if you get samples that have a good amount of picker nuggets, then great, uh, you, or you're doing well. But if you get one in your original sample, and then you run three or four more samples and you don't get anything like this well it's not quite as good still this is probably worth putting in some time and effort to explore an area that gives you a result like this you want to take more samples and see what you can do this is really a pretty good sample this is this is acceptable and, and worth exploring and put more time in now finally here's our third and last one you can see there's a big ring of gold around the edge of the pan if you crush down a pan full of rock and get this much gold as your result you need to be working that rock because this is probably $25 worth of gold uh, if you can crush a, a you know five or six pounds of rock and get $20 worth of gold you need to get a crusher and, and get moving because you, you can do pretty well with uh, processing rock. So this is an excellent result. And I hope that all your pans will look like this. The odds are probably not a lot of them will. But if you find something like this, you got a tiger by the tail and you need to chase it down. If you want to become a better prospector, well, I've got a book that I've written and it'll help you gain the skills of both hard rock and placer gold. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it right now. So let me tell you a little bit more about my book. Um, it's called Fistful of Gold. And I wrote it because I want you to be able to go out and find for yourself fistful of gold. And uh, you can see that it's a, an encyclopedia with all kinds of information, pictures and that sort of thing. It's not in color, but uh, uh, color would have cost me a lot more to have printed. And so the book would have cost a lot more. It's for sale on Amazon and you can pick it up. I'll put a link in the description below. I also serve as 
the editor for a, a prospecting magazine. It's ICMJ's Prospecting and Mining Journal. And honestly, you should check that out. We've got stories uh, and information, legal stuff, everything you know to increase your skills as a prospector. I write articles in this every month and a lot of other very experienced prospectors contribute to the magazine as well. So check the magazine out. Also, I have a website and the website is uh, at nevadaoutbackgems.com. I'll put a link for it in the description below, but there's gobs of information there that you will find useful in your prospecting efforts. Finally, I want to say that I really appreciate your comments and thoughts and even a positive criticism. Don't come on there and just toss out insults because I'll just delete your comments. But if you've got uh, helpful things to say and questions to ask, do write and, and put those in the comments because I answer my comments to people and uh, you'll hear from me in, in, you know, in, in responding to you. Uh, so if you've enjoyed this video and you like what you see and you're interested in uh, finding out more, well then sign up, subscribe, and hit the, uh, the notification bell so they'll let you know when I post new videos. And, you know, like it and share it if, again, you, you see stuff that you really are excited about. And I'll be coming out with lots more new videos. And so we'll see you again real soon.